Karen Kaplan, President and CEO of Hill Holiday. Thanks for joining me. Thank Let's you. talk a little bit about the overall state of the agency. Bring us up to speed with what's been going on. Sure. So we're doing really well. Um, thrilled to report. Uh, we had our best year ever in 2012. Uh, I became CEO in May. Congratulations. Thank you very much. And uh, I uh, unveiled my vision for the agency to the entire agency about a month later mm -hmm. in June. Uh, and it is to be the uh, best creatively driven modern agency in the country. Great. Uh, and we're well on our way. We have great momentum. Uh, and uh, we were um, we were lucky enough to win the largest pitch of 2012 with Bank of America. And the work is um, fantastic. Uh, we just had a great spot on the All-Star Game uh, for uh, veterans uh, and did a promotion there. I saw that. That's yeah. fabulous. Thank yeah. you. And then we were lucky enough to win the largest review of this year so far in Cadillac, so we're doing really well. Congratulations. Thank That's you. great. So what would you say those new business wins are representative of? You know, What is it about those in particular that um, you feel are some great takeaways for clients and agencies? So um, we've actually, we're six for six on the last uh, six pitches, which is very unusual for any agency, so we're doing very well. Those two wins in particular, I think, are reflective of the kind of agency that Hill Holiday is. They're both Fortune 20 companies, very big, very complex uh, companies and business categories, and that is what Hill Holiday excels at. We tend to have uh, a lot of clients that have a lot of moving parts, uh, that move really quickly, mm -hmm. and um, so from a strategic and creative perspective, uh, and putting big brand platforms together for these uh, clients that have very expansive uh, businesses, we're very good at that, and we're also good at kind of moving at the speed of retail, the volume and velocity required in the automotive business, in the banking business. Um, so in the case of Cadillac in particular, I know that you, you know, as you pitched it, it was really a, a collaborative effort among other, uh, Hill Holiday and other IPG agencies. Mm -hmm. Talk a little bit about that structure and sort of how you um, are looking to execute against that. Sure, so we pitched it in partnership with Campbell Ewald mm -hmm. as well as Lowe. So um, we, uh, we, Hill Holiday is responsible for the strategy and the creative. Um, Campbell Ewald for what we call the machine. They're the boots on the ground in Detroit. Mm -hmm. And um, and then Lowe is the global backbone. And so we have very clearly defined roles and we worked very, very well together in the pitch and it's going really well so far. But I think it is one representation of, I think, a very important trend in our business, which is moving, we've sort of moved from the dedicated agency of record where years ago one agency would be responsible for all of a client's business to the lead agency model mm -hmm. where um, you partner with other agencies that are either part of your holding company which is the case of Cadillac or um, in the case of the bank for example since we were just talking about it we partner with many different agencies that aren't necessarily part of our holding company. And why is that so critical these days? Well I think it's just business has gotten so complex and the um, marketing and advertising business is moving so quickly that I think it's just not realistic to think that one agency, uh, no matter how wonderful, is able to solve for every need that a complex client has. Sure, sure. Now obviously the talent imperative is such a big issue right mm -hmm. now, um, both on the client side and on the agency side. How are you meeting that challenge? So for example, we just uh, hired a chief strategy officer who starts this week uh, whom we found in New Zealand. Wow. So we are literally recruiting from all spanning over the, the world, globe. <laughs> spanning the globe, from all the way from down under. Uh, so our talent come from different uh, geographic. Uh, Graham Ritchie is our new chief strategy officer, a great example mm -hmm. of uh, literally bringing somebody from halfway around the world. But we also recruit from businesses outside of advertising. So we really rely on different perspectives and different life experiences. And you know, we talk about people being I-shaped and T-shaped. And you really have to hire for versatile skill sets and people who are really open and collaborative and curious and bring something different to the party. You are based in Boston. Mm -hmm. uh, let's talk a little bit about you know the unique perspective you feel the Boston Perch affords you and the agency. Yeah. So um, 
it's what's interesting is a lot of the agencies that you see doing well today have something in common, which is they're not in sort of the traditional advertising centers like New York and Chicago. Mm -hmm. They're in Boston and uh, you know uh, other you know they're in Portland, Oregon. Uh, they're in Boulder, Colorado. They're all over the place. And I think there's a benefit. To, I always say that we have to think outside of the box because we are outside of the box. Mm -hmm. And um, being in Boston, it's a great place to recruit talent to. People want to come to Boston. A lot of people either went to school, went to college, university in Boston, and they welcome the opportunity to come back. Some people have kids mm -hmm. that are in college and university, and so they uh, like to be there. We use Boston is a great place to recruit talent from Europe because unlike the West Coast, they're sort of halfway home. Sure. Six hours versus 12 hours on a plane. Yeah. Uh, so... And those uh, are all real challenges that you need to be aware of. And yes. I mean, we, we don't typically recruit from other agencies in Boston. We try to look beyond Boston and to bring new people to the market. That's great. Uh, you have quite the career ascension story yourself. Yeah. Um, and your your appointment to CEO comes after many years of working at Hill mm -hmm. Holiday. Um, in the in the start, you were the receptionist. Mm -hmm. um, talk a little bit about what your personal story, your career progression, has caused you to feel as a leader, and and, and how has it affected your mentoring mm -hmm. style, for example, and sort of why you want to now help shepherd other people through the agency. Well, you know, it's interesting. I just um, I spoke. At the uh, at our um, annual meeting and anniversary party in May, when I got promoted, I spoke to the agency about um, when I was first hired. Uh, I was uh, interviewed by Jack Connors, who was the CEO or president, I guess at the time. I'm not sure we had invented the CEO <laughs> title yet, and uh, he had he had personally interviewed and rejected 40 candidates for the receptionist. So he took it very seriously. And when, when he hired me, he said, congratulations, Karen, you are now the face and the voice of Hill Holiday. And I thought, wow, that sounds like an important job. And because he took it seriously, I took it seriously. And I remember, because of the way he framed it, I thought, well, that feels like something the CEO should be responsible for, the face and the voice of the agency. So at that moment, I kind of decided, I'm going to consider myself CEO of the reception desk. That's fabulous. And every job I had after that, mm -hmm. uh, I considered myself CEO of that job, that assignment, that department, uh, that account, that business line. And it served me very, very well. And so I love for people to feel empowered and uh, you know to feel like they are CEO of whatever role that they have at Hill Holiday. And so we're very entrepreneurial. We now have... 950 people, we're in three different offices, but culturally, we're very, very similar to when I started when there was one office and 125 people. And so uh, it's a very entrepreneurial entrepreneurial place, and uh, I love to um, give people jobs that they feel are beyond themselves at the time and sort of show them that you believe in them and then kind of see that they that makes them believe in themselves and then just watch them succeed uh, because I was the beneficiary of that that's a real hallmark well it's really interesting too especially since nowadays um, we are in this era where every um, employee needs to feel empowered and feel part of really the brand story and it sounds like you were doing that all those and, years ago oh and reception. I funny. because you know I, I love to um, you know I, I love to to uh, challenge people mm -hmm. And um, who who you wouldn't normally expect to be able to rise to a particular occasion, and because you get things that you don't expect from people, and that's what you need in this business. You need to create an environment where people feel like they can step up, if, even if they haven't done exactly that before. They feel like they can step up. They can take a risk. It's okay to fail, and then you get things that you know exceed your wildest dreams. Is the industry improving with regard to women in leadership roles? Well, you know, it's interesting. People ask me all the time. Uh, you know, four percent of women, four percent of CEOs are women, and you know, we have we struggle in our business, particularly in the creative area. Um, uh, creative directors, very few women. So I, I don't really know what the issues are. I've read everything about it. I'm optimistic because I continue to believe that women 
are really well suited for leadership positions. I think they're really well suited for the advertising business mm -hmm. because they're very uh, intuitive. They have a lot of skill sets that match up really well with successful marketing and advertising people. And so I, you know, we're 60 percent uh, women in our leadership and 50% uh, women across the agency. So I'm trying to do my part and yeah. trying to be a role model uh, and to, if I can inspire other people. Um, but, it, you know, I don't know what the um, barrier, I don't understand what the barriers are, to be honest with you. I, I feel like it's, um, you know, there's no, there's no real reason why there aren't as many women as men in leadership positions. Thank you so much, I appreciate it. That's great. Thank you, Jenny.